if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey friends, not uh, everybody on the channel, because there's so many new people, we've had so much growth in the last couple years, may know the history of I pretty much got rid of everything other than my hand tools to move from Iowa to California to take a job. And one of the things that I did when I moved is I got rid of a lot of memorabilia and a lot of cool stuff, you know, just to hang around the shop. And I've kind of slowly been starting to collect some of that. And completely out of the kindness of one subscriber and fan's heart, I just got sent a gift. I'm gonna give you a little hint. It's autographed from a MotoGP rider, a famous MotoGP rider. To, to have his memorability at the shop and I'm incredibly touched. I can't believe how far back the subscriber goes and that I, I didn't even know it. So I'm gonna show you what he what he gave me first. We sent to the shop, like no strings attached, just like he tells his story. He's just a super kind, cool dude to to do this for he's done it for other people as well, but it's just way cool. And then I went ahead and interviewed him on like, you know, where he comes from, what's his experience and so on and, and so on, how he's connected with how to wrench and what he does. Uh Milit retired military, thank you for your service, Sean. That this was way cool, but here's the video of me opening the gift you sent to me, and it's in my office with pride now. Thank you so much. Let's let's uh, let's open this and let's see this little interview. We appreciate this stuff. Like I said, no no expectations, but it's it's pretty cool to even just get uh, letters and cards and, and different things from uh, you fans, especially when you tell us like how our work has impacted what you do. So um, I've seen some pictures of like Sean's workspace and stuff, super cool, uh, watching you guys and getting to know you a little more. So why don't we just get Sean on phone, find out what he sent me. Uh, he's a veteran, so he's kind of funny. You can definitely tell in, uh, in the, the way he talks, the engagement, because he said whatever's in here, it isn't ticking on uh, that, it, that it's... Uh, what did he say? Now I'm forgetting, but I was laughing when he said it. I'm like, what, dude? Should I, like, have this opened in a secure place? But anyway, let's just get Sean on the phone and see what he has to say. He says uh, I might not get the significance of it. So I'm anxious to see what he sent and uh, and BS a little bit with one of uh, one of our friends in the community. Let's get him on the phone. Sean. Sean, hey, it's Shane Conley. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How you doing, man? So I know uh, chatting with you on Facebook and stuff, you had uh, obviously had some worldly travels, and we had started talking about uh, MotoGP racing, and then somehow this box came into play here shortly after that. So I think I'm uh, ready to open it if if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Right. Hopefully there's nothing rattling around in there. What's that? I said hopefully there's nothing rattling around in there. <laughs> you uh. You're funny. You can, you can definitely tell your military from the way you commented on a few different things. You know, you're like, well, it's not ticking, and it was just kind of funny. So I was like, man, should I open this in a secure place? Or, uh, that's funny. Dun dun dun. You know, it's it's kind of fun. You know, we've received a few different things over the years. Yeah, good job taping this up. Uh, a few different things from over the years and I think just you know just the time that you know someone stops their day and takes the time to you know write something or send something I just want to say I appreciate that no, absolutely I mean, it's, a, it's a small thing that I can do you know to show my appreciation for what you're doing and available for people so whose crazy autograph is this so do you remember well, I guess it might be a little more familiar if there was a 93 next to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marquez, right? Yeah. Oh, no doubt. This isn't something I could go get off the shelf. Man, are you <laughs> sure you're willing to give this up? Check this out. Remember, I said I was recording this. This is cool. Yeah. Uh, so the, look at the, the circuit. The, the, when I was working overseas, after I retired, um, wow. I, bro, I went to Qatar. And was able to go to the season openers at LaSalle. And what's really awesome about that is that the season hasn't really started yet, so people aren't in very, you know, they're not in bad moods, there's not a lot of pressure on everybody. 
And when you look at some of the other tracks like Misano or, or um, you know, pick any track really, you know, where there's thousands and thousands of people, at La Salle every year, there's like 6,000 people total. So when you're walking around the paddock, you're just bumping into people. You're bumping into crew. You're bumping into the riders. You're bumping into, you know, everybody. Wow. It, it, it's one of those things where everybody's just in a good mood. It's a great environment. And, you know, you get a number of things. Like, I've, I've got several bike pieces signed, and I've got more hats than I can count, and a couple of coffee cups. And, and it's just one of those things where... Every now and then, it's nice to be able to share that stuff with somebody that wouldn't normally have that opportunity, if that makes sense. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, when I when I moved from Iowa, so, so I don't know if you if you knew my history. When I left Iowa, I went to work for Suzuki as the trainer for the U.S. at uh, the U.S. headquarters for about a year and a half. Okay. And I went from, you know, uh, 80 by 60 foot building, you know, I... I had 25 motorcycles, you know, boats, bikes, fork. I mean, what was, how was I going to take that stuff to California, right? So I just, I had to just get rid of a lot of stuff. And I had a lot of like motorcycle memorabilia that I was like, where am I going to put this stuff? And I did, I just started giving it away. I had sent some to fans. I started just like letting stuff go. And I always, I always thought, man, I really wanted to hang on that stuff. So it's funny that now that I've got some uh, roots going again, I've started to uh, be attracted to, to collecting stuff like this again. So this is going to be awesome. It's going to sit in my office next to a couple of the other pieces I've been able to get. But, man, dude, that was just ridiculously ki kind, especially an autographed one. Holy smokes, that is just wild. Well, I'm glad you appreciate it. Like yeah. I said, I mean, I've, I've learned some stuff from the, the videos that you sent, and I can appreciate you know what you're trying to do with making some of your knowledge and experience available and like i said i mean it's it's the least i can do i think to to share some stuff that you know may be significant to some people and not others but it's again an opportunity not everybody gets and so it just it felt like it'd be a, a nice thing to do and i'm glad you appreciate it no i mean that's super kind it's super kind i always love these kinds of relationships especially uh you know, the, the one thing I've really tried to do with the channel is, um, and this is something I like to highlight in our, our conversation here because, I, like I said, I'm recording this, but the, uh, you know, all this, all the videos and all the wrench on stuff is really, you know, what I'm doing nights and weekends too because I got a full-time job, you know. So as I moved into the, the drone company, with the drone company, uh, being a trainer for them and creating content, it's a, a full-time job on its own. So... One thing I thought, well, what, what do I do with this YouTube or what's that really look like? And part of it, you know, we talked about in the beginning here, just the craziness of being uh, alone and remote was to really work on building the community more. And it's like, I kind of sat back a couple months ago and thought, why am I wasting time on idiots or, you know, just people that don't care? And I just had to like, let it go and really just think about I still really enjoy working with people that appreciate it and get it and also help back. You know what I mean? So like um, you're part of that community where like even just uh, I think it was this weekend where we were talking about uh, suspension and I sent you the pictures of that tool, you know, like just that kind of like throwing the ball back and forth with like an actual community versus every stranger in the world has really been direction I've been trying to go. So I, I take this very personal. Uh, a gift like this of of your time and really being so thought out and especially something so cool man this track i'm looking at the track here on the cup and it looks super wild yeah it uh it's it's a very interesting Check track the way that they, the the spectator area is set up is is kind of comical um the do you have any photos just, that you could do you have any photos you could share that i could drop in the video yeah i can uh, i can try to send you a couple yeah you send me a couple just be interesting that's cool yeah, the uh, I watched uh, unfortunately several riders, um, you know, crash out. You're so close to the to the track, everything's so tight that I've seen several riders crash out of practices and races. And and I met some fantastic people at, at the races. And it's it's kind of funny because you get to the point where you've met somebody a couple of times and you almost feel cheesy asking them for their autograph after that because they don't seem quite as big as they do <laughs> when you're watching. 
TV or something else just because you, you've I don't know that you can say you've established a, a rapport with them but but you've met them enough times that that you are familiar to them you know after the fourth or fifth time that you've seen them and and it's it's pretty cool when somebody looks at you with recognition you know right um, Marquez had actually made a video and and I couldn't to this day tell you why I asked him to do it but a, a buddy of mine, his daughter had, you know, this schoolgirl crush on him, and so he asked if there was anything that he could do for me. I said, you know, it'd be great if you could just throw a shout out to, you know, my friend's daughter. And he couldn't pronounce her name. It, it, it was really, really throwing him to pronounce her first and last name. And so we're sitting there laughing. It was probably a 20 second video that it was just he and I, nobody else around, and he just did it for a friend of a fan. And and it was funny because. Marquez gets a, a bad rap sometimes for the way that, you know, he rides and everything else. But I'll tell you that in, in talking to him personally, my opinion of him as a person is very, very different than, you know, what what you would see on, on TV or how he does things on a motorcycle. And, you know, especially in today's time with his injuries and everything else, I hope he could, makes a recovery and, and he comes back. But absolutely, I'll send you a couple of pictures and see if I've got any good ones that are worthy of publishing. <laughs> I'm sure they'd all be good. Man, that's a great story. We uh, One of the things I really miss about uh, living out in L.A. was there was a group out there it was so cool, and there's got to be people here in Phoenix. I just haven't met them yet. But uh, there was a gal that talked a movie theater into giving up uh, the space, and they would play the MotoGP events, like, at this movie theater. And it was just, it was called, Mag it, it, actually, it's a Facebook page, uh, uh, Maggie's uh, MotoGP Theater or Theater MotoGP or something like that. Oh, um, nice. I could share the link with you. But, man, you talk about... So cool, you know, to see 50, 75 bikes or something pull up and park all out in the street. And then everybody had, like, kick-ass equipment. And I was kind of curious, uh, what, uh, how, how'd you get connected with How to Wrench or me? Or what's, what's that backstory look like? So, you were teaching classes up in, what, Iowa, I guess? Yeah, yep. And you had put together a video... I was trying to find, I was doing um, end play, setting end play on a 95 Sportster on uh, rear wheel bearings. And I couldn't find any information about it. I mean, I had, I had Google stuff. What I was reading in the Sportster manual didn't really tell me what I needed to know. And I came across your video. And then I was looking at a couple of other ones that you did, apparently while you were teaching, I don't know, I guess they were community college, community college classes. Yeah, it was a, for a motorcycle program back there in Iowa, yep. Which, uh, which I think is awesome, and uh, I wish they had something like that around here uh, that I could get involved with. Just as the, uh, I've been a mechanic on aircraft for about 30 years, I guess, and uh, it's... It's not the same. <laughs> a lot of things are different. And so I just kind of became, I guess, a, a fan of the channel, probably because of the way that you deliver information more than anything else. You know, you're genuinely trying to, to teach people and give them tips and insights and stuff. And, and honestly, not everybody does that. Uh, I, I think that, you know, there's some people that have a talent for, for passing on information, and there's some people that don't. You definitely have it. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I happen. I I know that video you're talking about, and of all videos that, you know, that connected you, I guess, to how to wrench. It's funny because, uh, the original, uh, part of that video is actually of all the pieces of content in the world I could ever use or make. That's actually the video I used to uh, apply at the college to uh, showcase that I could teach. <laughs> Was that? was that uh, that topic. I had one made that, uh, I don't know if you ever knew the history where I started that chopper building school, like way before I was teaching. Oh, okay. So back in, oh, whew, geez, what was that? I won the Superbike Championship in 02, won Sturgis in 04. So it must have been around 03, started uh, really what was the world's first uh, organized chopper building school. And... Through that, I started making videos and uh, for the students, 
and it was it was crazy. There was actually a, a local news reporter that her and her father were taking the course, and she kept saying, "You ought to put this stuff together and sell it." And uh, this, I mean, this is so long ago. It's funny just thinking about it. But uh, you know, fast forward a few years later, I was using that piece of content to try and convince this school to hire me. So funny stuff. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, you know, you talk about stuff like that because, you know, if you really look at, you know, how stuff is put into a manual, whether it's aftermarket or OEM, there's just so many things missing that you just need as a mechanic, as a technician. And I think that's where a lot of people get into trouble is they just, they grab a manual and think, oh, it's all in here and it's not. I mean, there's a lot of other things you have to know what's going to be affected and what you're going to touch. I think that's where... Uh, you know, my mom got sick and I started really trying to figure out what's my role in life and to make the videos and uh, or to teach and just trying to, you know, pass on those skill sets. Um, that was the big driver is like, you know, what's missing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. It's funny when you say that because I think that, you know, when you, when you look at the different manufacturers and they all have internal training programs and there's things like you know mmi that that'll teach you some of the different things when you when you're a mechanic and whether it's natural talent or you just gain experience in other ways there are some of those things that they, they seem pretty simple on reflection or even after you watch a video or something like that for you but you know some sometimes those those little tasks will take hours trying to figure out, you know, what are you doing wrong or what's going on or how come you can't understand. And I think that one of the things that's great about YouTube in general is that it delivers that kind of content and you can see where you don't have the advantage of practical application. You can see somebody that's going through it and through the magic of, you know, rewind and pause, you can figure out little steps that you might not have figured out on your own. And there are things that you're constantly learning as a mechanic. So anytime you have somebody that has more experience in a specific task, it's always good to try to, to pull from that information. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about the videos that you put out is, is again, you, you deliver information in a way that people can learn from. And, and again, not everybody and not everybody on YouTube can do that more. Sometimes it's more about how much you know or, you know, what you know, and they're trying to sell something where I think that, you know, you certainly, you have the business aspect of what you're doing, but for the most part, you're, you're putting information out there to help people learn. And I mean, it's, it's, you can't shake a stick at that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think our channel is unique in the fact that, um, we aren't selling, uh, you know, parts, accessories, if you will. So I think sometimes people can tend to, you know, because everything we do is just sharing links. And uh, and I, I share the Amazon links. We get up, you know, a penny on every 1,000 looks at it. You know, I mean, it's funny because people, uh, people really think like, a, you know, tons of revenue come from that. Yeah, if you're, if you're doing makeup, maybe. But, you know, a, a cable luber at 20 bucks, no. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just picking something recently. But every little bit helps. And you always kind of, you always kind of think like, well, you know, if, if uh, you know, all the subscribers really use those links, it would add up to stuff. And, and the majority of the 700 videos were, were done, obviously, all for free and everything when uh, it wasn't even considered like a business, right? It was just like there was a desperate need for, for a change in education. You, t you brought up MMI. Speaking of which, I had a question for you. Since you're an aviation mechanic, where'd you get your schooling? I know military. <laughs>
but I had bought a, uh, a 2001 Hayabusa over in Japan. And, uh, and it was pretty neat to be able to ride that over in, uh, over in Japan and up around Mount Fuji and things like that. And, and mm. just got into kind of tearing it down and modifying simple modifications, really bolt on type of stuff, but doing stuff that I think most people were kind of afraid to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, they didn't mess with their new bikes or whatever. And, uh, and so I guess for lack of a better way to put it, it made sense for me to take the military education and try to try to transpose that into being able to help people out and so you know that kind of evolved into me and a a group of friends that would go up to the mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina a couple times a year and truthfully I would spend as much time there working on bikes as I did riding them and you know next thing you know I've got a garage full of bikes and a bunch of friends that you know sometimes they don't know things that need to be done or they don't know how to do the things that need to be done and and i can come in and and i can help out and and it's a it's a neat thing especially to be able to uh to take what i learned in the military and and turn it into you know presses and hand tools and changing tires and and things that that aren't very different you know on different platforms and put that kind of stuff to use helping people out on motorcycles so cool Uh, well thank you for your service first off no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Are you retired? I am. Yep. I, uh, I retired back in 2013. Wow. So you've been wrenching on motorcycles since, huh? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, oddly enough, I work in a company uh, that builds motors for surface ships and submarines right now. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the, the motorcycle stuff is all on the off the clock but that's yeah. how I spend most of my weekends and I think like most other people I get down in the garage and I got a little refrigerator and a big TV and a bunch of wrenches and it's a happy place right right no doubt well I can relate to that there's no doubt about it uh so what's your main bike if one <laughs> if one <laughs> couldn't ask you know, me that I'll tell you, and everybody laughs when I say this but I I think right now uh, my main bike is a Grom <laughs> um, I'm on, on the Grom. Um, oh, that's funny. My wife had for years been trying to get me to ride Harleys, so I <clears throat> I picked up a, a Harley touring bike, and she's got a Harley. Uh, so we we ride those the most because we ride those together. Sure. Uh, that's cool. Your wife rides. What's that? That's cool. Your wife rides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that's I think it's a it's a neat neat thing you know i've got pictures and stuff of her riding on the dragon and every year she's more seat miles and more comfortable and i it's yeah it's it's absolutely fantastic and then uh she also has a little ninja 250 which ironically enough considering i'm talking to you i've got to pull the cars and clean those up because the bike won't run right um and uh i just got to pull the whole back end of the bike apart to get them out um but uh, in the trailer, I've got, you know, two Hayabusa's and I've got uh, an R1 and I've got a, a Gixxer 1000 for the track. And so it's, it, I really try to spend equal time on the bikes, but it, it always seems like whatever is most easily available with the garage, things packed in is what I take out. Yeah, I hear you. Well, maybe someday we'll be able to uh, meet up at the Dragon or something. That is a sure enjoyable place for me. Um, yeah. I've been able to ride that three times, so a, for yeah, not being, not uh, living in the area, yeah, that's pretty good. Used to go up a couple times a year, and it was it's I, that's one of my favorite places on the planet. I know that I would I would especially plan to make sure and go in the middle of the week because I heard it's a nightmare on the weekends. Yeah, well, what a lot of people will do is they'll ride the dragon during the week, and then they'll go out and they'll do you know the Foothills Parkway, or they'll go do the the Terre Haute Skyway, or they'll do the um, you know one of the other roads, even going down into Georgia or or up north to the Snake, just to avoid some of the um, some of the the touristy type stuff. And, and a lot of times, it it seems now it's more like it's groups, like car groups and stuff that go up there and. Um, I know that that is, has picked up a lot, but a place that I want to go that I haven't been able to get to yet is the Bat Dragon, I think in West Virginia. Hmm. 
would you would I want to try to get there? But would I, I, would you call I it? I think they're awesome riding on the East Coast. Would you call it the back of the dragon? Huh, I haven't heard of that. So it's so the tail of the dragon is in the, is on the you know Tennessee North Carolina border. Yep. Um, but the back of the dragon, I think, is in West Virginia. Huh. I've only been able to get down past it once, so I don't I don't think they're connected at all. Gotcha. Other than you know the the shape of the roads and, and they you know I think the back of the dragon became popular after the tail where you know people were looking for this kind of thing. Right. Right. Um, well, I did a I did a fifteen day bike trip one year. I think it was oh eight oh eight or oh nine, and uh, left from Iowa and did the East Coast. And we did, I mean, the Dragon. We went as far down as North Carolina, then rode the coast up, and nice. and then at New York made it to Niagara Falls and then bolted back. And uh, it's still one of my favorite trips uh, because the, you're right, the riding over there on the East Coast was just to die for. Um, it was just so beautiful for so often. Uh, I'm loving it actually here in Phoenix. The the ridings, it's pretty easy to get up into some beautiful riding pretty quick. Um, but so different with all the uh, foliage and stuff of the East Coast. You know, it's just its own beauty, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hating it right now. I'm not a huge fan of snow, but, yeah. you know, that's... I was, that's I was super happy to leave that behind in Iowa, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, man, I, uh, I it was cool getting on the phone and, and getting the gift from you. Like I said, I want to thank you, and it was kind of, I thought, just be fun. I'm going to try and do more of this with uh, more people on the channel and, and uh, be, you know, cool. People just kind of get to know who some of the people are commenting and what that looks like. And, uh, yeah, man, so I really appreciate you. This was way cool. I'm almost a little speechless because I, I think it's that cool, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Awesome. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Yeah. Um, well, thanks like for being that. a supporter. I, I saw you join the channel. That means a lot to me. Uh, you know, I'm trying to offset, you know, the cost of everything, you know, to have it make sense. You know what I mean? And sure. and uh, so, you know, I thought that two bucks a month was a really fair way to, to try and do it. You know, if someday had thousands of people, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> getting to sit and play on motorcycles all day again, you know, so. All right. Well, hey, man, you make it a great day. Thanks for your service, being connected, and, and for the gift, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the call, and thanks for the videos. Yeah, stay in touch. All right. Thank all right. you. See you, bye. Wow. Oh, uh, you know, I don't even know how many people are going to stick around to watch the video, you know, to the end like this, but this was really cool. This was really super cool. Uh, can't thank Sean enough. I've got Marquez's autograph now. Man, it's pretty cool. I'm like all shaky not to drop this, right? Uh, hey, this is some fun stuff. I want to do, like I said, more of this, and I'll probably just create a, a playlist for uh, uh, the videos for uh, that I make, you know, talking to you fans or whatnot. You know, sometimes people just like listen to them like a podcast kind of thing, and. Or maybe you'll get connected with someone or maybe you'll have something in common. I'll be like, hey, yeah, check out that, that call I did with uh, that veteran from uh, New Hampshire, you know, so whatever. Anyway, I'm going to get at it. I'm going to go put this in my office and uh, I hope you all are having a great day, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. And uh, thanks again for being part of this. I appreciate you all. As always, keep wrenching and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.